Hey filmmakers, don't know the difference between public domain and stock video? Well, you're about to find out. So buckle up, click. Hey filmmakers, Julian here, back with another episode of Intune after a relatively brief hiatus. Did you miss me? <laughs> well, don't worry, I'm back. Between high production costs, travel restrictions, and the need to social distance, getting a crew on location to film can be more trouble than it's worth. Stock footage solves that problem. And while it's something that ad agencies and web developers have been using for years, it's growing into a tool that all sorts of content creators are using to supplement their work. But copyright claims and DMCA strikes have become just a little too common. And that means that creators want to know how to use stock footage legally before they start including it in their projects. So to help give you some peace of mind, let's break down the differences between public domain video versus stock video and how filmmakers are using this sort of content. So what is public domain video? There is a lot of meaning in a name. A girl has no name. In the case of legal or copyright terms, you can usually piece out the definition based on the name, at least in most cases. When it comes to video, however, terms like royalty-free music and public domain take a different meaning than when we're talking about songs or images. After all, video is a combination of audio and visual, and you can't shoehorn visual elements into the same copyright rules as music. Public domain video is basically in the same boat as public domain music. To qualify as public domain, a video must not be subject to copyright. In other words, if nobody claims ownership, even partial ownership, of a video, then it falls into the public domain. In fact, video only enters the public domain through three different types of doors. <laughs> no, not that kind of door, silly. Different kinds. Like door number one, if a creator forfeits their rights to a video, it enters the public domain. Two, if a government produces a video, they're legally obligated to release it into the public domain for public use. And three, if the creator of a video died more than 70 years ago, it is most likely in the public domain. Now, this one is a little strange because countries measure that time differently. But as you might expect, that's an extremely rare thing. Most filmmakers want to hold the rights to the things that they pour so much time and effort into. So while public domain video does exist, it will either be too difficult to find or of, let's call it, inconsistent quality. Oh, no sick burn, bro. Sick burn. What is stock video? Stock video is a bit more complicated to define, even if it is much more readily available and widely used across the industry. For a piece of content to become stock or royalty free, its creator has to sell the content to another entity, usually a site that specializes in royalty free content. The creator can also license out their video to multiple locations, which is why you sometimes find the same video on different stock video marketplaces. But for the sake of this example, let's stick with the example of a creator who sells the rights to their video. If this second entity is a stock video company, then they will either sell individual licenses to the video or add it to a library that people can subscribe to. Kind of like licensing music. The goal here is to provide other content creators a way to license the video, download it, and then incorporate it into their own projects. Creating and selling stock footage is a way for filmmakers to generate some extra revenue. That means there is a much bigger catalog of stock video across the internet and almost all of it will be high enough quality that you'll actually want to use it for your projects. Whoa. Now, that's not always something that public domain video can offer, and it's a major reason why stock video has grown into such a popular resource for all sorts of content creators. All right, what's the big difference? All of this information filters down to the biggest gap in public domain video versus stock video. If you're sorting video files into buckets, one of these two options will have a lot more content in the high quality bucket than the other. On the other hand, you'll have to pay for it. Public domain video will be free and won't cost a penny out of your budget. And that might make it more worthwhile than paying for either a stock video file or a recurring marketplace subscription. But if it's free, that probably means you're gonna see it used somewhere else. At the end of the day, the differences boil down to these three things, pricing, quality, and variety. All right, creators, do you feel better equipped to make a decision between public domain and stock video? Tell us in the comments. If you didn't know, Soundstripe now offers stock video for creators. Hit the link to browse our library of high quality cinematic video. What will you create? Oh, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notifications button. We'll see you on the next episode of Intune. Until then, keep creating.